Ready to get started with my first bill for 2022. Well, hey guys, and welcome back to another Interstellar Modeler. So my first model of the year is gonna be a Star Wars kit, and uh, that's gonna be this one here. It is the X-Wing from Revell. This goes back a few years now. As you can tell, Kylo Ren is on the box art. This was a gift given to me a number of years ago, and it's just been sitting on my shelf. I've always wanted to get to it. And uh, since I'm in a Star Wars mood, I wanted to kick off the year with a Star Wars model. I thought I would reach for this one. Uh, I know a lot of people are building the Razor Crest, and that's really all the rage now. But I figure rather than adding another log to the fire, if you will, because there's a number of videos, including Lou Dalmasso's excellent build of that ship, I would go in a different direction here and, and uh, start with this one here. So this is a Ravel model kit. It's uh, uh, labeled here Master Series. It's a fine mold model kit. As I understand it, uh, this particular mold or, or a version of the X-Wing, this model kit, was one of the best that you could find up to a certain point. And uh, so Ravel had apparently the license. Maybe you guys know a little bit more about this backstory, but they had the license or got a hold of the uh, molds for the kit and produced this particular X-Wing. Now, what I'd like to do is add a little bit of a twist here and veer away from painting it in the Red Squadron paint scheme. Uh, this, of course, is Red 5 that you see here on the cover. Uh, what I'd like to do is actually apply the black and white paint scheme of the Partisan Squadron. Let's go ahead and take a look. The Partisan X-Wing made a brief appearance in Rogue One, and in the screenshot, we see one of the crash fighters in the background. The fighter squadron, under the direction of Saw Gerrera, uses a black and white paint scheme that certainly distinguishes it from the usual colored stripe markings we're used to seeing. As reference for the paint scheme, I will be using these pictures I happened to come across online. This was built by a modeler named Atticus F and happened to run across it on the website Replica Prop Forum. Now I contacted Atticus uh, to get his permission to use these pictures and he was kind enough to allow me to do so. As you can see, he did an excellent job with this ship. I really like what he did with the weathering, which I think is very appropriate here. Bear in mind, Saw Guerrero Squadron flew in harsh conditions, had seen lots of battles, and weren't supported as well as other outfits. And I think Atticus's build definitely reflects this. So as with most Star Wars models, the funnest part is the painting and detailing and weathering. Uh, you know, Star Wars models, uh, typically the ships are not in mint condition, so it's really fun to apply these different types of weathering techniques. So very similar to the Boba Fett ship, I'm going to be applying various layers of paint. Uh, I think what I want to do is start off with the primer, a metallic base coat, and then on top of that, we'll be applying the white and then the black. And then what I plan to do is to build it in the landed configuration. So I'm not going to be um, installing any lights to this because it's going to be in this... Uh, just on this display base, it's going to be a desert terrain with some um, with a work crew around it. And I'll give you more details about the display base in a little bit. I'm still trying to work that through. All right, well, I'm ready to get started. But before I begin with the build, I'm going to give you a peek at what comes inside the box. Uh, there are about 140 parts or so included in this model kit. Now, there are other videos that go into more detail about this particular model. So I'm not going to go into too much uh, or spend too much time with... Uh, with describing what comes inside uh, because this, this kit's been out for a while and you can definitely access more information about that on YouTube. So uh, let's go ahead and take a brief look and then we'll get started with the priming and the painting. So just a quick look at the instructions here. Um, as I understand it from watching other uh, model builders on YouTube, the model pieces together are really nice. In some cases they were mentioning that you didn't even need glue for most of it. Uh, you can see here we have the assembly of the wings, which I will be painting as I go along, even though this is going to be uh, set in the landed configuration. I want to still detail the interior, um, particularly those places you're not going to be seeing in the landing configuration, simply because later on I may want to display it in a flying configuration. So just to give me that option, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And as you can see, the model kit comes with a pilot and the droid. Now this is a 148 scale, which is smaller than the old MPC kit, which I believe was 164 or 163 in scale. So taking a look at here at the fuselage, you can see really nice deep panel lines, which is going to be helpful with a wash as we uh, enhance those panel lines and detail our ship. Definitely molded differently than the MPC kit. As you notice now, the nose cone is not part of that long fuselage. If you recall, the MPC kit had the upper and lower halves of the fuselage, which included that nose cone. Uh, one modeler in particular noted that he really liked the fact that you didn't have to deal with the seam here at the edge. 
And uh, there's another uh, place on the fuselage as well that's molded in a similar fashion where you, the seam is covered uh, quite nicely. So uh, again, deep panel lines here along the wings, and you can see a really nice end piece, the aft section. Now there are two trees that come just like this, so since they are identical, I'll just show you one of them. Uh, this tree obviously holds a lot of the pieces for the engine assemblies. And then the decal sheet is interesting, although we won't really be using most of this stuff here. Um, you can see the chipping and all of that uh, that is included. Uh, what's nice is they do include decals for the droid. And the final two trees are the stand, which by the way also has the pilot figure attached. And this is the cockpit windshield. So I have to say I'm pretty happy with the kit. I think it's going to make a pretty good replica of the ship. No doubt there are some inaccuracies, the most obvious being what's provided for the cockpit. Now I did look into seeing if there was something available that could 3D print for a 148 scale X-Wing. There are some available for the 129 scale. I'll put a link to that below just in case you're interested. Um, but uh, rather than going through the trouble of trying to resize something like that, I'm just going to use what's provided here. I'm happy with that. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, well I have all the parts primed. I also did apply a uh, layer of Vallejo steel to the surface just to give it a metallic sheen. And I randomly placed brown spots here and there because I thought it'd be nice to have some color variation as we do this step of weathering. And uh, so what I've got going on here then is the salt and hairspray technique, which I've used many times. I think um, what I particularly like about this technique is that you end up with these little fine chips that I think are appropriate for this particular scale uh, versus using the heavy chipping fluid like this. Uh, there are other chipping fluids available that are uh, give you a finer look. I just don't have any of that here on hand. So I'm going to stick with this tried and true technique. So in this bottle I have the hairspray sprayed in. Just uh, got this stuff at CVS. And, and then I've got some salt here to use. So again this technique involves spraying that uh, layer of hairspray and then sprinkling on the salt followed by the application of your base color. And then we'll wash away all of that with water. So I'm not going to go into too much detail since I've done this many times on the channel. I'll give you some brief video of it, but I'll get right back here and show you what this looks like when it's completed. Well, just an example, it doesn't always work out as you planned. Uh, the paint easily came off, actually, and I started off with a toothbrush here to weather this side, and quite a bit came off there. This is one section that is supposed to maintain a white color, and I just didn't want it to weather that heavily. Uh, I abandoned the toothbrush and just used my fingers along the sharp edges to uh, remove some of the paint as I went along here, and um, the bottom part, I think, came out much better. Uh, the wings, not too bad. Uh, bear in mind, a lot of this is going to be also covered with black paint. So um, we're going to be doing some additional weathering on top of this. So I'm going to revisit this area here and uh, touch this up a bit. And I still have the rest of the wings to work on as well. All right, so here it is redone now. And I ended up masking off where the black is going to be, just to kind of give me an idea how this is going to work. Uh, but I think it turned out better this time around. And uh, you know what helped out with the chipping effect was to actually use a paper towel. You can see here I'm doing this on the end piece. Just by using the paper towel you can get the chipping effect. And I'm going to now remove all these parts here from the sprue. I usually do that before painting, but uh, in this case I thought it might be easier, at least for this initial weathering, to still have it connected here. Alright, let's go ahead and move on. Well, headed back to the instructions, step one is to work on the cockpit. Uh, it consists of just the main piece here and the seat. And there is a targeting computer I'll have to add in as well. But this slides into here. And the rest of the control panel is molded into the fuselage. If you are familiar with the cockpit, you can tell this is not 100% accurate. I'm okay with that. I did make one modification, and that is to take some styrene rod and wrap it around here and cut an additional piece to stretch from here to here and painted the end silver. And uh, for the buttons I just uh, took some Vallejo colors and a toothpick and just randomly chose buttons to color all around the cockpit. <laughs>
right, so here are the wings assembled. As you can tell, I have the upper engines attached to the wings and uh, some of the lower. Uh, I also have the wings gloss coated right now because I'm going to be applying a wash and some other detailing. And you can tell that I have the wings glued together, which was not what I was originally intending to do. So a couple quick notes here. First of all, with painting the paint scheme, um, it can get a little confusing, at least it did for me. I wish I had dry fitted everything together to mark off the orientation of the wings, uh, or at least of the paint scheme, which I would suggest that you do, because when I assembled everything after painting, the pattern was inverted. So <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, but that's definitely one way to avoid that. Uh, I did glue the wings together uh, because I had every intention, of course, of displaying this in the landing configuration. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I wanted to give myself the option of being able to display it with wings open at some point down the line. However, the chances of doing that are, are pretty small. Um, when I was putting the wings together, I tried to hold them together, but they would still prop open. And uh, so because there's little chance that I'll be displaying it in any other configuration, I decided just to glue them. And I wish I had made that decision earlier because I would have avoided doing the painting on the interior of the wings that now you're not gonna be able to see. So anyway, take some time to think it through. <laughs> All right, so what I wanna do here uh, is take a second just to show you some quick video of how this compares to the old MPC kit, which I happen to have one right here. This is one I built for my son uh, quite a few years ago. Uh, I just thought you'd be interested to see the difference between how these engines piece together versus the way that they did with the old MPC kit. Let's take a look. Now, if you ever built the old MPC X-Wing, which I actually happen to have one here. This is one I built for my son years ago. Um, the, engine, the engines consist of three pieces. You have this front round section, you have this housing that goes right behind that, and then you've got the rear exhaust here. So the way this differs is that it separates it into one more part. Uh, what we've got going on here are the fan plates here that were molded into that front piece are now separate. They slide right into here. And they also, by the way, come with this little vertical piece that's, that uh, attaches here. And I actually had to trim that a little bit in order for it to fit underneath the housing. So assembly is done by attaching the fan blades here. You have the rear section, which has openings for these posts, so it slides onto here and then you have the housing that attaches in front of that. And it was shortly after recording that demo that I started to look at it going, you know, something just doesn't look right and realized I had to do some repainting, so, <laughs> oh well. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here and continue on in part two with uh, completing the construction of the X-Wing, moving on to the display base and doing a final review. Hope you're enjoying this build. If you have any questions about it, feel free to leave a comment down below or email me at intersetofmodeler at gmail.com. Oh, and before you leave, um, I wanted to show you that I got a hold of a Revell Germany Razor Crest. And so excited, I just got this in the other day. And, uh, you know, it really continues to be uh, generating a lot of interest uh, online. So if you are interested in getting a hold of one of these and uh, kind of feel for round two, you know, because these guys got a jump on them, uh, I, I'm sure the round two one's going to look great. I, you know, I saw the round two uh, kit at Wonderfest last year, and it looks really good. But uh, I just uh, was seeing so many things about this model kit, I decided to pull the trigger. I got mine off eBay. The seller that I got it from did not have any other ones listed, so I'm not sure he has any left. Uh, but there are a number of sellers on eBay, and the price is going to vary. I actually was able to get a hold of that for about $77 complete with shipping, which really isn't that bad. It actually shipped from Austria. It took about three weeks to get to me. Uh, the model is beautifully detailed. I did open the box and uh, really was admiring the level of detail that's included in that model kit. So uh, I'm really excited about it. I definitely will plan to get to that uh, a little later this year. All right, take care guys. I'll see you then in part two.